Beaches are the last trees in my garden to pop their butts and start growing. Now these are a little bit difficult to ramify. And one of the things you need to do in springtime to get these to ramify is prune back. Now pruning back already, of course, over winter, I did some main pruning on the main branches, removing the very long stalks that had formed over the, over the summer last year. But now it is also the moment that you need to look at, do I need to prune back further? And the answer is of course, yes, you need to prune back further, but not now, this is too early. The buds are just opening. And of course I can go in and do what I do on Japanese maples and remove the growing tip. But for beaches, there's a bit of a dispute. I'm a little bit in doubt, but what I'm doing, I'm letting them grow a little bit longer. Did you know that a beach can flush multiple times in spring? So what you see here is a beach that has extended fully. Um, the branches are holding itself up. The leaves are starting to hold their shape and it's basically starting to harden off. So here I am two, maybe three days too late for the technique that I wanted to show you, but I'm still going to try it. Now, basically what you do in spring, as you have these nice little floppy branches, you prune them back. You prune them back way sooner than you would expect. Now, when pruning beeches, but also all the other trees and removing leaves, keep in mind that you always thin the top much more than the bottom. And trees, of course, you know, if you've watched more of my videos, and they want to grow up, they want to get big, and they invest much more in the top than in the bottom. So you really need to stimulate the tree to think about growing the bottom branches more than it normally would. Otherwise you just get a big tree, um, or you get very, very fat branches here in the top. I got this from somebody who dug a hedgerow. And this is still very much in development. Um, the main branches still need to thicken up, and therefore I'm not going to prune as much. I am going to remove here from the top, because really, Beaches tend to be quite quickly top heavy. So I'm going to keep this nice and tight and short and I'm removing a few of these big leaves. Look at how big these leaves are on this beach. Don't worry, this is not genetic. This is just the response to having an abundance of water an abundance of nutrients, having been pruned and wired over winter, reducing the number of buds on it. So it releases buds and leaves that are very big. But I can leave this on for now, aiding all this new development here at the bottom. I need to check though, the wire is already nearing the stage that it is biting in here. So maybe I'll remove an old wire from here. I think another two weeks, three weeks, should be okay. Yep, this is basically all done for now. I'm not gonna prune more, this needs to develop. Timing is everything, of course. Um, yeah, my life is sometimes a little bit hectic and all of a sudden, a whole week, I don't get to do very much in bonsai. So last weekend, on a Sunday, I decided my beaches are not right yet to prune, but I thought, ah, later this week, I'll have time and I'll prune it then on a finalized video. Well, it's Sunday now again. The way that you get them to flush multiple times in spring is by applying a technique for which I'm now late. Now, if you look at these branches, you can tell there is sometimes six, seven leaves on one of these branches, right? And all of this sits in the bud. Once in spring, the bud opens, all these leaves are already in it. So basically the, uh, the plant doesn't do anything else than allocate sugars and water in the bud. The stem starts extending, the leaves start unfolding, and this is what you get. Now you can see here a terminal bud is starting to form at the branch. It is still tiny, but it is starting to form. It is a sign that the tree has stopped elongating and is now preparing to push from this bud again. Now what you then get is just an elongating branch. But what we want in bonsai, we want ramification. We want back branching, we want back budding. So what are we going to do about this? So one of the things I've done to get good back budding on this beach is in winter I pruned the top branches quite strongly. You see here all these cut off branches. That's because they were getting very long and Basically not a lot of ramification happening, yet it was putting a lot of pressure on fattening branches here rather than creating them there. Now what you see is that a few of these branches have not started to push yet, but there are tiny little buds coming. So in a couple of weeks I expect these to be fully pushing as well. These however have pushed and I'm going to just remove here the growth, everything more than two leaves. Now normally what you would expect at this stage in the year well, actually three days ago, is when you remove this, the tree realizes 
that they're pushing resources into a branch that are way too much for the leaves that are left over. So if you do this too early, the leaves that are left over start to extend more. They get very, very big. However, if you time it right and the leaves have all formed, they've all started and you then clip it off, it is like a deer has passed the shrub. And the tree responds by pushing the buds in the elbows between the leaf and the branch. And that's what we're actually after when we try to prune in spring. Now what I'm going to do now, I'm going to just go through the whole tree and remove all the extended growth back to the first two leaves. This is going to result in a very bare looking tree, but maybe it will still help. Also, I have a few buds still forming and I'm going to clip those off as well. Um, I'm noticing there's already aphids on it. Woolly aphid is one of the problems that I have on my beaches. Um, I can't do much about it. I can spray what I want, but one of my neighbors has a 10 meter long hedgerow of beach and he's not spraying. So whatever I do, doesn't matter. They'll just fly over uh, after a couple of days. Um, actually, you might see them flying around me every once in a while when I move this tree, but this is what I'm doing. When possible, prune back to leaves that are actually in the pointing in the direction that you want the growth to go. When pruning a tree like a beech, um, you have to realize that there's only one bud forming at every leaf. And this is in contrast to maple, where you can get at every node two branches forming. The maple has two leaves next to each other. If I get back budding, then a bud will form here and a bud will form here. So even though I could clip back to two nodes, this would give me one, two, three, four new branches, but I only want two. So if you cut back, you always look for, oh, look at that. Look at all these white flies on it. Anyway, let's go back. If you therefore are in a sort of a clip and grow situation, you can decide which direction the branches will grow. Effectively, a bud that sits in this connection here will grow out that way. This bud will grow out that way. Now consider this branch sitting in the tree like this. I can then decide, do I want the branch to continue in this direction or do I want the branch to continue in that direction? And that determines the further development. Now, here it is quite clear. It doesn't really matter whether you end with this bud or this bud, but if it sits in the tree more like this, then you want to end with this bud. Now say this is the first bud on a branch. If I were to clip here, it would mean that this one would grow out, but you only have one branch. So it doesn't ramify. You want to have at least two branches to grow out. So if you look here at this branch, you see, this is where the branch started to grow in spring. The first leaf, the second leaf, the third leaf, the fourth leaf, the fifth leaf, and the sixth leaf. That's the initial push. These two are very close to each other. I mean, really, this is maybe half a centimeter, an eighth of an inch. Then here, it triples in length. And here again, it's a little bit longer. And here, yeah, well, do we even need to talk about it? Let me prune this off for now, right there, just to show you. Look at that difference. This one internode is, is, is the same as these two internodes together. Well, actually, it is longer. So now I have this dilemma. These are two very no nice buds close to each other and a third but a bit further. I'm going to remove it all the way to here because this is already crossing that branch. Now, I hope that here in the back, this branch has a few short internodes with little buds as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this leaf in the hope that this whole section starts to grow. Here below, again, one leaf, two leaf, three leaf. But here, this third bud is in the right direction. So this third bud I'm going to leave and I'm going to clip it there. Right, 
this one is now also cleaned out nice and airy and the nice thing about the flush that I'm pushing for now the buds that are here are not as well developed as the buds for the initial push so I'll get fewer leaves per push but I'll also get smaller leaves because the tree needs to develop them from scratch right now in a sort of an uh, emergency situation as you will because I just lost 60, 70, 80 percent of its foliage. Now this is a good thing because we want a nice compact tree, we want small leaves and as the next flush has started to grow I will start removing more of these relatively big leaves and I'll keep the canopy open again. This is now going to go back into the sun and let's see what it looks like in a couple of weeks. Thinning out is important. Some of these leaves get really really big in spring. Um, this one has been too well fed last year, and therefore now I have lots of large leaves. In a few weeks time, when I have the second flush, I will also start doing some defoliation. I'll remove the leaves that are too big, um, I'll start cutting back the size of the leaves, all to trigger a third flush on the beach. Yes, you heard it right, I'm going for a third flush this year, in this video. Three weeks have passed, and now if we look at the tree, you see fresh growth all over the tree. Obviously, here on top, there's more growth than in the bottom, but all in all, it's growing quite well. Now this tree already has fairly small leaves, but if you have a tree that has much bigger leaves, there's something you can do right now to improve the amount of sunlight that gets into your tree, further stimulating the buds that are now opening up. Make sure that you really check your tree because this young growth is a, because woolly aphids like this one or white fly or the beach white fly really like to come in on your tree and feast on these young leaves and here actually I've had some other critter eating as well if you like the videos please share click like and leave a comment yet if you have a beach that has bigger leaves you can of course um, say, well, this is a big leaf, I'm just going to clip it and remove it completely. But that might leave your tree completely bare. So the alternative that you have is you take a leaf, you fold it over the main vein, gently, and then you just cut off the last section of the leaf. You remove half to a third of the leaf surface. The leaf is a lot smaller and it will still look like a beech leaf. This of course is a development technique. This is something that you do on a tree that is not going into an exhibition over time with increased ramification, reduced fertilizer and water, you will slowly get smaller leaves naturally. This is just something you can do as you are developing it to encourage more light in the inside of the tree. And with that, better back budding. This is of course a technique that is predominantly useful in the upper part of the crown. Um, removing mainly the big leaves. If you have to do this on every single leaf, then maybe your tree is just not far, far enough developed. Um, I'm really thinning out selectively a few of the big leaves that are really shading out the tree. So even if no growth is visible yet everywhere, you see here green buds swelling up. These will start pushing in maybe a couple of days. Now with this, um, we're all done pruning. This is pretty much how to maintain a beach and prune it in early spring and early summer. Keep in mind, trees will stop growing somewhere in the middle of summer around the longest day, so the 21st of July. And if you have removed a lot of foliage from the tree, keep in mind, the trunk is probably quite sun sensitive 
and the removal of leaves means that more parts of the trunk are exposed to the sun. So ideally you do this in a week that is a little bit shaded or you don't put the tree in full blasting sun for the first couple of days and you just put it in dappled shade first. Um, of course, as the tree is pushing, more and more leaves will come in and they'll fill the trunk again. But be careful, sunburn on trunks does happen, particularly with species like beech. <laughs>